All right, next question is from Green Fitness. I have some kind of massive imbalance in my hips. In the past, I've hurt my back and right hips several times, and no matter how I train, it's like it always comes back. Now, I stretch a pretty good amount, and I always warm up. I can still handle load, but it constantly holds me back, especially on my deadlifts. This is a classic, mm -hmm. classic example of a left-to-right imbalance. Descriptive. Okay, yeah. there's, a, there's an asymmetry going on here. Now, here's what happens. You train a particular way for so long, uh, both feet on the ground, so bilateral type training, barbell exercise, even dumbbells, but both arms and legs at the same time. You do this for so long, your body has an imbalance and it just strengthens along with that imbalance to the point where that imbalance then gets in the way. And then you'll find that once you go past a certain weight or intensity, ow, I hurt myself. You could warm up all you want. You could stretch all you want. That strength imbalance is the issue. It's not necessarily a flexibility imbalance, although that's part of it. It's not necessarily an imbalance in any other way other than strength. If there's a strength imbalance and it's big enough, then you're going to have what are called repeating injuries. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what this person said. I keep hitting. So if you're listening to this right now and there's like one thing that always pops up once you get to a certain point, one of the best things you could do is an entire training cycle of unilateral training, yeah. real unilateral map training. Map symmetry. Map symmetry would literally, for this person right here, if they followed map symmetry one to two times, they would probably solve this issue. Yeah. It would probably be the solution. I would, I would, I would add to to, um, and this is ever since the you know our great experience almost eight years ago now with Doctor Brink. Uh, look to the feet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just not something that because you're you're talking about your hips and your low back, and so uh, rarely do people think that it's it's stemming from the foot. Yet more often than not, it, it is. is. Yeah. So even though this is in your hip and low back, you're probably looking from the knees up. But many times there's and it doesn't take much. Uh, because as it goes up, just like the the analogy that Sally says, if you're like barely off a degree and then you go miles out, that's a huge gap in between. Yep. Think of the same thing with a little bit of discrepancy on your right foot. So if it just slightly pronates, right. by the time it gets all the way up to your hip and your low back, there's a big difference. So that pay attention to that if there is a discrepancy from left to right. And, and normally the most common ones are the, the feet will externally rotate more on one mm -hmm. side or the ankle will will roll and pronate in. Uh, and then that will cause the caving in, the internal rotation of the femur, which then you get that asymmetrical shift that you're talking about. And it's all coming from, you know, foot strength, which is normally related to just overall foot strength and ankle mobility that's limiting you. And just, and again, the symmetry. And then if you have the ability to do symmetry barefoot and work barefoot, yeah. like I would, I would recommend doing that too. hundred percent. I mean, that's such an overlooked aspect of everything we're doing, especially like up the kinetic chain, how, massively that affects all the rest of the joints and uh you know the that sort of triangle of pressure right if you can just refocus and, and slow down and just kind of pay attention to that like even in your stance and your walking patterns that's like that's heel the ball of your big foot and then the ball right the, so like your big toe, toe pressure your pinky toe and then like where the tongue of your shoe is right, right. like having that whole forefoot sort of okay you know contacting at the same time and like just trying to keep focused on that because you'll you'll notice any kind of deviation from there and see what's happening uh, but two, even like they said that they stretch. And so what kind of stretches are you doing? I want to know like what, if this is a static stretch or are you actually doing mobility drills and, and doing things where priming, you, yeah, we're actually like strengthening and we're, we're trying to uh, uh, intensify that with muscle tension. So your body feels like it has strength and control and stability there, not necessarily just trying to relax and get range of motion. Yeah, and you could also do this. Oh, this might be what's happening. Oh, this stretch feels good, so I'm going to do this stretch. Well, yeah, you could alleviate the initial tension and issue, but you're not solving the root cause. By the way, this is an, this is an experiment that someone can run that would illustrate what we're talking about. You could take a like an insert and put it in one shoe, and that'll literally lift your foot up by not even a quarter of an inch, like a quarter of an inch of an insert. So put like one of those Dr. Scholl's foot things in one foot, and then walk around all day and tell me you don't notice a change <laughs> your in your low back. back. Yeah, yeah. Oh You'll start God. to feel, you might even feel tension up in your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And it's all coming from this like quarter inch rise in your foot that might all, might almost be imperceptible. So um, this this is how it happens. And so over the years of, of strengthening your body with this, you know, quote unquote, small imbalance, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah. literally, if you're listening to this, follow map symmetry like one or two times in a row and you'll probably solve this issue. 